Hey guys, welcome to another week of Wash Wednesdays with myself, Francisco, coming to you from another location again in Nanaimo, BC, Canada. West Coast, West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> Just kidding, all coasts are awesome. But uh, yeah, if you haven't been here, you guys should come and check out the West Coast. It's pretty amazing. Uh, but today, guys, I want to, I got a few, a couple of things in my heart that I just want to share with you, and um, I'll just pray and we'll get to it. Father, I thank you, Lord, right now uh, for filling my mouth, Jesus, and I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, that it would come upon me, Father, that you would speak forth your word, that they would be spirit and life, the words that I speak, God, that it would impact the hearers, God, that it would drive the hearers to the secret place, that they would go get their own manna, their own meat, their own revelation, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for freedom, even as people uh, watch and listen. Thank you for total freedom, Father, even right now, Lord, that, that the anointing destroys the yoke right now. For everybody hearing right now, I just release freedom through the camera in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come, have your way right now, Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. Um, I just want to say how grateful I am to just to live in an, an amazing country, to have amazing friends, amazing family worldwide. Uh, I love you guys wherever you're watching from. I love you uh, in the depths of my heart and soul. I love you guys and uh, I hope you're blessed by this video and other videos, past and future videos that the Lord has put on my heart to make. Uh, please, please like, share and, and tag a friend. Do whatever you need to do. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so that more people can be blessed. If you're blessed by it, uh, make sure that others are blessed by it too, guys. So today, guys, there's two words that God specifically put in my heart. And those two words are rest and surrender. And it's super important, guys, that these two words, that they be evident in our lives, guys. It's, it's all over throughout scripture, guys, uh, talking about rest, entering rest, and, um, and just this, this uh, just topic of surrender of just surrendering to God like we we can't follow God we can't follow Jesus we can't be a Christian without surrendering everything guys and I know sometimes you know it takes a process for for some longer than others but really we got to come to this place guys where we're fully submitted fully surrendered to the master to King Jesus because we got to realize guys that we're not alive for ourselves uh, I always say this guys it's the gospel the gospel sets you free from yourself it's not about me and it's not about you. It's about him through through us. Living his life, embracing the resurrected savior, the resurrected king, embracing his life within you and releasing him everywhere you go. If if it was God's will, if everything that happens was God's will, then we wouldn't need to pray, we wouldn't need to go evangelize, we wouldn't need to do these things that he tells us to do because he's going to do it anyways. But he chooses to partner with man. And God's will is done um, when man's will submits to God's will. And, uh, you know, the Lord is looking for laid down lives. Is, isn't it beautiful? We're called to be just like Him, right? And He laid His down. He laid His life down for us so that we can lay down our lives for Him and for others. We lay down our lives for Him and for others, guys. It's, it's the great commandment, the greatest commandment love God love people we were made in his image and his image is selfless love we're 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 called to be selfless love guys we're not we're not called just to receive the love of God we're actually received to become the love of God everywhere we go guys that we're actually called to be walking talking manifestations and walking talking encounters of God for people around us Look, guys well what happens is we get too self-centered self-absorber or self focused inward focused that we forget why we're alive we forget why Jesus is inside of us and we get distracted and that's the enemy the enemy schemes guys is to get you distracted to get you off course to get you focused on yourself rather than focused on him I've said this before guys but you know if, if you're focused on yourself you're gonna find stuff that's wrong with you <laughs> but if you're focused on him you're focused on truth he transforms you to be like him. I, I went through a season in my life where I was always looking for what was wrong with me. I'm like, and, I, and, I was, and guess what? When you look, you'll find, you'll find, you'll see. When I find, when I was looking for things wrong with me, I found things wrong with me. 
And I finally got the revelation that I was meant to look at Jesus, to look at Him, to look at His beauty, His glory, beholding the glory of the Lord, so that I can be transformed into that same image. It says that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And so we need to be looking at Jesus. We need to be looking at Him. When we look at Him, we manifest Him. And that's why we're alive, guys. We're not here for ourselves. Um, but what happens, uh, and I, check out my other videos, it's like we, we start doing things, we enter into works, works mentality, performance, comparison, all that demonic thinking comes from a place of the flesh. It comes from a place of religion. And uh, all that produces death and destruction, guys. It doesn't produce any fruitfulness whatsoever. And that's why it's important that we, we enter a place of rest, that we rest from our works, Rest, when it, the Bible talks about rest, is not just talking about physical rest, although yeah, that's good, like you should, you know, rest and have Sabbath and all that, but in Hebrews, when it talks about entering his rest, be diligent to enter his rest, it's talking more about just physical, guys. It's, it's talking about a state of being, entering into the rest of God, and from that place, the works happen. I've said this in different wording in the past, but it's all makes sense. It all comes together very nicely, guys. We need to enter the rest of God. And how do we do that? Well, there's many ways, but basically, we gotta start by surrendering our lives, laying down our lives, our ambitions, our desires, our goals. We lay down everything that we thought we wanted or needed. We lay it all down for the sake of the King, for the sake of the Gospel. Because he laid down his life, guys. And we got to capture that revelation that we're not alive for ourselves. So everything that I thought of for my life is like, I got to throw that out. And Lord, what do you want for my life? And as you get to that place of humility, true, true humility, uh, you start to get that revelation of why you're alive. And when you get that revelation of why you're alive, uh, everything changes and you start living the real you, guys. And that's what the Bible talks about, denying yourself. You're denying yourself is you're denying who you were never meant to be. You're throwing that off. Put off the old, put on the new. That's what deny the self is. Deny the self, pick up your cross and follow Him. Follow Jesus, guys. Do what He does. Everything He did, you can do and better. John 14, 12. He, he said it, guys. He's in us. He's with us. And He empowers us by His Spirit, by grace. When we receive grace, He empowers us. But... Um, and so we need, to, we need to enter the rest of God. And uh, we, we, we enter the rest by surrendering and submitting. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, Submit therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. How is the devil resisted? He's resisted when we're submitted to God. Like when you're submitted to God, the automatic response is the enemy's resisted and the enemy then flees. And he'll come back at an opportune time, but he will he will flee because he's terrified of you knowing him and knowing who you are, who you are and whose you are. That is why he throws all these devices and schemes at us, guys, to prevent us from entering rest, to prevent us from surrendering, to prevent us from stepping into everything God created and called us to be. And the, the number one distraction that he throws at us is to keep you from the secret place. What happens is we go, we get alone with God, we don't feel anything, we don't hear anything, we get distracted, we get all whatever, our minds go to other places, we're just sitting there, we're like, God, where are you? Like, this is silly, you know? And we start to like be analytical in our thinking and we're already wrong in that place. If you're, you know, like, and it's, it's all relationship, it's not about getting alone with God for something, you just get alone for Him, just to be with Him. So our heart's got to be right in it, guys. Um, and so like, if you've been alone with Jesus and you feel nothing happening, you didn't hear or see nothing, it's okay, just keep submitting and surrendering. The Lord loves that heart of just surrendering, submitting, God, I don't feel you, I don't see you, I don't hear you, but I thank you for your word. And I do thank you that you are with me because the Bible says so. And as you start to claim that and believe it, guess what happens? When you believe, you receive you start to experience when you believe. Too many people want to experience first and then they believe. When it's the other way around in the kingdom, it's totally backwards. 
So when you get alone with him, just get alone, quiet yourself, sit in stillness, silence, read the Bible, pray in tongues, pray, wait, put on soaking music, whatever you know to do, just do it. It's all about the heart. It's not about what you do, it's about the heart. You get alone with him, and that is a sign of surrender. That is a sign of surrender. That you're taking time apart from your day, from your busy schedule, to get alone with God. Because you realize you can't do anything without Him anyways. You can't face the day without Him. And so, if that's you guys, if you are in this place of like, I don't, I'm not feeling anything, hearing anything, but I am putting, I am putting the effort, I am getting alone with Him, that is awesome. God loves that, He blesses Him. And I want to just tell you guys to keep going. Keep going after Him, keep seeking until you find it's not a one-time thing, guys. It's a keep seeking. Keep going after him with all your heart. And, um, and you'll find him, guys. Not that he's lost, but you'll find him. You'll, you'll engage with Holy Spirit in that place of uh, the secret place. And you'll, you'll be able to have, make contact, if I could say it that way. Make contact with heaven, uh, with God, the creator of everything. You'll make contact with him in the secret place. And then you'll get addicted to him and you won't want anything else. And so, we surrender our lives, guys, in order to enter the rest of God. And uh, I, just wrote, I just wrote down a few definitions about uh, rest and surrender. So, this is what the Bible says about surrender, guys. Or, this is just a definition, sorry, about surrender. It says, cease resistance to an enemy or opponent and submit to their authority. And another uh, definition says, abandon oneself entirely to a powerful emotion or influence give into so the first one is cease resistance this says it to an enemy obviously he's not our enemy cease resisting god submit to god and the enemy's resisted okay so stop resisting god stop resisting holy spirit holy spirit i i promise you he's pulling and tugging at your heart daily daily and like all day because he wants you to get alone with the father to get alone with him because he wants to speak to you. He wants to impart life to you, impart faith to you, so you can face the day and bring him glory in all you do. But we try to do it without him. And we wonder why we're tired, exhausted, discouraged, feeling we're gonna burn out. We wonder why, it's because we're not plugged into the source. And then the second definition of, uh, to surrender is abandon oneself entirely to. A powerful emotion or an influence to give into. The Lord is asking, and he, He's looking for those that are going to fully abandon themselves over to Him entirely, body, soul, and spirit. Everything that you are has to be submitted over to the Lord, to His Lordship, guys. Many make Him Savior, but not enough make Him Lord. You know, thank you for saving me, Jesus. I'm going to heaven. My, I got my ticket to heaven. But then we kind of do things our own way, you know. Or Yeah, we go to church, we go to the prayer, Bible study. And yet there's zero relationship with Him. That's what He's after. Relationship with Jesus is everything. It's everything. You can't have relationship unless you submit, surrender, get alone with, with Him and give Him everything. I've said this before, but when I first got saved, He said to me in an encounter, He said, uh, you're either all in or you're all out. And he's saying that to us. You're either all in or all out. Those that are lukewarm, he spits out. That's a scary verse. He wants all of you. He wants you on fire for him. Radical Christianity is normal Christianity. He wants us all in, guys. Fully surrendered. Everything given over to him. And then the second uh, word is rest. And the definition is cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. And then another definition says, place hope, trust, or confidence in. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I, looked up, um, I looked up the Greek definition of rest from a verse that I'm about to read. And it means to refresh the soul, guys. Refresh the soul. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can re refresh your soul. <laughs> Nothing, nobody else can do that. And how do we do that? It's not just taking a day off. That's physical rest, which is important. But that's not how, that's not the rest that God tells us to come into. Matthew 11, 
verse 28 to 30 says, Come to me, Jesus is saying this, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Basically, what he's saying is, you got to come to him. That's the submit, surrender part. You, you come to him, and he gives you rest. He gives you rest for the moment. You've had a tough time, tough week, tough life. You come to him, or you first when you first come to him, you get saved. And you enter into the, like the honeymoon type phase that we, you know, of your relationship. And like things are amazing, you're experiencing his presence and his voice. And then that stuff starts to kind of go away eventually. What he's saying is, come to me and I'll give you rest for the moment. In order to sustain that rest, you need to do the second part which says, and learn from me and you shall find rest for your soul. You sustain the initial rest by coming to him and learning from him, being taught by him. Get alone, he teaches your heart, Holy Spirit leads you and guides you into all truth. You submit to yourself to the process of God teaching you, that yoke. You yoke yourself to God. You submit yourself under his authority, under his teaching, his, under him entirely, and he teaches you. And then you start to experience rest. And as you learn from him, you start to sustain that rest. And now you're walking in this rest all the time. Not just when things are bad, you, get, you go to him and he gives you rest for the moment. But you start to live out and walk it out all the time. Because you've submitted yourself to the process of learning from him. And that is the rest that he's talking about, guys. That we would enter his rest. We can't enter rest without Him. We, we know that Jesus, like, He didn't really obey the Pharisees' laws. He kept breaking the law on the Sabbath. He always healed people, did different things on the Sabbath, and they're like, oh, you're breaking Sabbath. It's, so it's not necessarily just about the day, guys. I think it's important to have a day off and rest. I have, I have a day on Saturdays that it's family day. And sometimes I go golfing, but the rest of the day is family day and I don't do anything else. I think it's important to have a day like that, guys. A day of just rest, chilling out, hanging out with your family, whatever it may be. But more importantly than that, because if we don't catch the, the rest that Jesus is talking about, then we just kind of make it like a religious thing or we go back into the week and we're still not refreshed even though we took a, you know the weekend off or whatever we're still like oh like not work oh boy this and that and you have this terrible attitude you start your day with a terrible attitude and uh, you're going into your work into whatever with this attitude of just complaining bad attitude angry resentful bitter whatever it may be and that's uh, obviously not Christ-like um, and that's because we haven't been spending time with him he said come to me and I'll give you rest Learn from me and I'll, you'll find rest for your soul. Get alone with him. Receive the imparted rest, the imparted peace, the shalom of heaven, the refreshing of your soul. Receive it. Learn from him. Apply it to your life. Walk in relationship. Walk surrendered. Surrender meaning getting alone with him, but it also means obeying him. He says, go, pr go pray for that person limping over there, okay? Even if you've never done it, just do it. <laughs> he told you to do it, just do it. If you don't know what to do, just go, hey, I saw you limping. Uh, can I pray for you? They're either going to say yes or no. If they say yes, praise the Lord. Just say, okay, uh, just one sec. In Jesus' name, whether you lay hands or not, doesn't matter. Just command the sickness or the pain to leave. It's simple, guys. It's really simple. We complicate things. I will do, in the future, I will do more evangelism training type focused uh, videos. That, that's not for today, but what I'm saying is that we would obey His voice. When you walk intimately with Him, He's not just in the secret place. He's just not just at church. He's not just at the prayer meeting. He's with you. So wherever you go, He's there. And you're aware of Him. 
because you've been spending time with him and all the stuff of the world comes, kind of falls off of you and you're more aware of heavenly things and you go into the world and God starts to show you things about people's lives. You might walk by someone and your shoulder might start hurting and you know you don't have shoulder pain. It's called the word of knowledge. You go back, hey, excuse me, this is a weird question. Do you have pain in your shoulder? And they'll be like, uh, yeah, how do you know? That actually happened to me one time. I was walking, forget what I was doing, downtown, walked by, past this lady and I felt pain in my knee. And I stopped and I'm like, sorry, this is might be a little weird, but do you have pain in your knees? She's like, yeah, how'd you know that? And I just shared that that uh, I believe in God and he speaks to me about people. And she's like, wow, really? And it turned into something cool and I prayed for her and it was awesome. So like, it's better to to step out, obeying and, and hearing God and step out and like nothing happen or they reject you or say no. It's better that happen than you never stepping out in the first place because that's disobedience. And the other thing that I've learned as well is slow obedience is disobedience. When God says something, do it right away, guys. And the more quicker you do it, the more things you do it right away, you, you start to grow in authority, power, anointing, hearing his voice. You start to grow in these things. The things that God's given you, when you use them, they grow. It's a, it's a spiritual principle. And so that that's surrender as well, guys. And when we're doing that, we're doing it from a place of rest. Why? Because we've been spending time with him in the secret place where we've received refreshing for our soul. So we're walking refreshed and carrying it to those that are weary. We were weary one time, but because we've come to him, we've received and we continually come to him, not just in a time of need, but every single day, every moment we come to him, we receive, we take it out to the world there's a lot of lost and broken and weary people out there. It's just facts. And they're looking for an encounter, whether they know it or not. They're looking for an encounter with God. One surrendered life, one laid down life to the master can do so much damage, guys, to the kingdom of darkness. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's so, so awesome. How much damage you can do to the kingdom of darkness if your life is laid down to the master. I shared last Sunday at my church and the message was on being a dread champion. The Lord told me that, to speak about uh, what it means to be a dread champion because the Lord is raising up dread champions. One of the characteristics of a dread champion is that they are greatly feared. Greatly feared by who? The enemy. By demons. By the devil. Terrified. That's why the enemy puts all these lies and throws attacks and all these circumstances at you to prevent you from knowing who you are in him because when you know who you are in him he's lost he's a joke he's a little critter he's a cockroach and you realize that when you know who you are and whose you are and then he's terrified of you and you walk by people and the demons shudder <laughs> it's simple guys just know Jesus get alone with him surrender submit it shouldn't be hard because we're not it's not like like though we are yes we're slaves to God we're not slaves in the way that us humans think of slavery. He, like back in the Jewish, like the Bible days, the servants, the slaves were treated just as good as the sons. Like we're sons, but we're slaves of righteousness as well. Meaning like I, I've surrendered everything. It's, I'm not holding back any, anything because he didn't hold back from me. Why would I hold back from him if he never hold back, held back from me? He gave his son. He literally gave everything. For God so loved the world that He gave everything for my sake. Why on earth would I ever hold back anything from Him? It just doesn't make any sense, guys. Maybe we're withholding subconsciously something you don't even know. Well, good. Get alone with Him and ask the Holy Spirit and He'll show you. But if there's things that you know you're holding back, stop it. Give it to Him. It's not scary. Surrender it. Give it over to Him. He'll give you the power to overcome, guys. He's so good. He's that good, guys. He's amazing. He provides all your needs according to His riches and glory. You, he's given you everything you need for life and godliness, guys. Everything. He does not withhold good from those who love Him. He withholds no good thing. How will He not also, that He gave you His Son, how will He not also give you all things, guys? He will. He's awesome. He's so good.
He's so giving. He's love. And you're his son and his daughter, and you're made in his image, called to be just like him. And so you don't withhold, because he never did. And you're giving, because he's giving. You're love, because he's love. You're laid down life, because he laid down his life for you. You laid down your life for your friends, for everyone around you, for your neighbor. Your neighbor being anyone around you. <clears throat> this is the Christian life, guys. It's not about going to church, sitting in a pew, listening to a message. You might be listening to this message sitting in a chair. That's okay, but do something with it. Get along with Jesus. Don't just take in a lot of information. Oh, that's a good message. Can't wait for next week. But from, from, from today till next week, did you do something? That's all that matters. It so doesn't matter if this, this message tickles your ear. It doesn't matter if this is all oh, cool revelation. If, this, if the revelation doesn't bring transformation, it doesn't matter. Get alone with him, go after him with all your heart, surrender everything. I'm, I don't know how many times I can stress that. Surrender everything to him, Jesus, to, guys. Surrender everything to Jesus. Give everything up. Because if you don't, you're living a lie, a false identity. You were not meant to live for yourself. You weren't created for you. You were created for Him, for His image and glory. Submit yourself to truth. Submit yourself to who you were meant to be. Deny yourself, throw off who you were never meant to be, put on who you were meant to be from the very beginning, created in His image and likeness. I can just keep saying that over and over, but I won't. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. And uh, please pray for me and my family, for the ministry. Pray for Nanaimo, for the young people in Nanaimo, that they would catch fire. Um, pray for the ministries and churches of Nanaimo. Uh, we're, we're, we're believing for 10,000 souls, guys. We're believing for 10,000 souls. That's just the tithe of, of the big thing that's coming. And we're believing for it, guys, as a church. So believe with us. And uh, again, guys, um, if this blessed you, please like it, share it, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Francisco Castro Ministries, um, and uh, yeah, share it with a friend, guys. Thanks so much. God bless.